Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be looking at all the different types of Drosera, which are also known as sun juice, that you can find throughout the entire world. So let's start the video. Okay guys, so before we get started, I have just two things that I want to firstly say and do with you. You guys had some dirt in you again. I just want to take you guys, spray down our Drosophyllum seeds real quick and also move our polycarbonate panel off of the rubbish bins because it has finally stopped raining so we can move those bins and then you know when it starts raining again, which is going to be on Sunday, we can put it right back on top of the bins all over again. So let's go do that real quick. Okay, so now we've sprayed up our plants, we have moved the polycarbonate panel and I've brought it now inside because I don't want the birds to like jump in it and I don't want dirt really to get onto it. So I just have it inside but busy drying off and yeah, it'll be safe inside until we need it again, which is going to be in a couple days because it won't stop raining, which I'm not complaining about really too much, but it does get annoying having to constantly run outside and put the panel on. Anyway, let's start our list of the different types of drosters that you can find in the world. Now this is quite a long list and it was actually compiled using the book, The Savage Garden. So if you guys do want this book or any other items to help you grow your plants, such as soil, some sands, perlite, just different equipment like thermometers and TDS meters, spray bottles, all those different things. If you're looking for any of that, I have that all down in the description below so you guys can get yourself some of them. And this book, The Savage Garden, is a really good book which I really do recommend to all of you guys who want to really look after your plants really, really well. As it is often called the Bible of carnivorous plants because it has so much information on all of the different plants. So without further ado, let's start this list because it is quite long and I hope you guys enjoy this. First off, we will start off with one of the most well-known and famous and easiest to grow Drosera out of them all. And this is the Cape Drosera or otherwise known as the Cape Sundew. It is also known as Drosera capensis as that is its scientific name. These guys are super easy to grow. They grow in pretty much any soil mix you give them as long as it doesn't have too much nutrients in it, which will obviously kill the plant and you ensure that it gets the right type of water. If you guys can you know, give it that, they can literally grow anywhere. They can grow in your windowsill, they can grow right outside, they can grow in your shoes. Whatever you want, they can grow wherever you want. And they make quite long leaves and at the end of these leaves, they have their very sticky little traps. And obviously insects fly around, they see this, they think it's food time, they land on it. They start to eat this and then the plant's like, yeah, I'm gonna eat you now and the insect has absolutely no chance of getting out and it slowly curls around them. Oh, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit warm. Up next, we have subtropical rosette drosera. Now, you may notice that a couple of these drosseras are you know, kind of in the same group, but they have been separated. And that is simply because some of them need their own information. Some of them are kind of famous like the Drosera capensis, So they get talked about separately. So as I said, we'll be talking about the subtropical rosette Drosera. Some of these Drosseras can also grow in, you know, South Africa in the Cape, which is where some of them are from. But other ones, are, obviously, they are not from. Bear. He's walking on the polycarbonate panel. As I was saying, some of these guys are native to South Africa but they are also just in different categories. So yeah, anyway, these guys are Drosera such as Drosera alicea, Drosera spatulata, Capillus, Cap Capillaris, and Drosera slackii. As I said, a couple of these guys are from South Africa and we will talk about them again later on, but they obviously just live in subtropical climates and they are obviously rosetted. They are very interesting plants, super easy to grow, just as easy as Drosera capensis, but they need a little bit more of the correct soil mix and obviously they need 
good sunnas, bright sunnas for them to do really, really well. Next up, we have tempered drostra. These guys are drostra such as drostra intermedia, drostra rotundifolia, and drostra anglica. Obviously, these guys are super interesting plants and they obviously grow slightly differently to the rosetta guys. They obviously aren't entirely rosetta, although they are round. They have petioles and at the end of the petioles is where they actually have their traps. So a little bit different, but you know, obviously a big difference. These guys are also temperate growers, which means that they like to have nice, warm, hot summers. Whereas in winter time, they go dormant and they go to sleep and obviously it's very, very cold. And when it comes to springtime again, they grow back from what is called a hibernacular, which is basically a fancy word for hibernacular, hib hibernating little bud thing that the plants comes back from after their winter dormancy. Another temperate drosra is actually the forked leaf drosra, also known as drosra bonata. Now these guys are native to Australia and you know some parts of New Zealand and they are very, very beautiful and interesting drosra to grow. Of course, as the name suggests, they have forked leaves. So we can look at Drosra bonata, var bonata, Dacotoma giant. There's also the small T form and obviously the Multifidia extrema. Now these guys are all obviously the same species, but just different varieties. And as you can tell, they look very, very different and are very beautiful plants to grow, especially when they get super big. Included in that list of the tropical Drosra, is actually the Queensland sisters. Now these are three plants native to Queensland here in Australia, up north also in the tropical regions and these three plants are Drosra adelaide, Drosra prolifera and Drosra schizandra. Now these guys are you know they're called sisters because they're quite related to each other but they are very very different levels of difficulty. Drosra adelaide is easy mode, Drosra Prolifera is medium mode and Drostra Shizandra is, you know, master mode because these guys are super, super picky and super difficult to actually grow. These plants prefer to be kept in a little bit of cool climate, although they don't want winter, you know, temperatures. They want it to get very cold, but they do prefer to stay between 14 to 28 degrees Celsius. And obviously they like to keep nice and moist in their clean rainwater or distilled water or reverse osmosis water. Now we move on to the cooler growing tropical sun juice. Now these guys, of course, are also tropical, but they just grow in cooler climates. And the reason for this is oftentimes because they're actually growing on mountain tops. And if you've ever been hiking or been on top of a mountain, you know it is actually quite cool at the top of the mountains. These plants include Drosera madagascarensis, Drosera ultramafica, and Drosera hilaris. Now I've seen Drosera hilaris in the wild. They are very, very beautiful plants and we actually have some seeds busy growing in our collection. So if you do want to see these guys growing up with us and growing them with me, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on seeing how they look when they get much older. As I said, they like to be kept a little bit cooler than the others. They are oftentimes called cool growing sun juice. And obviously it's because they, as I've said, like to be kept much cooler than all the other guys, which may experience temperatures up into 40 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously they like to be kept in different temperature ranges. Now we will move on to the woolly sun juice. These guys are very, very amazing because they are, as the name entails, woolly. They have little hairs on the actual plant itself. And the reason that they have these hairs is to deflect the sunlight rays which hit the plant so that the actual plant itself can be kept a little bit cooler. Now the reason for this is because they get a lot and a lot of sunlight and a lot and a lot of heat where they are native to, and that is northern areas of Australia. These guys are also known as Petulara sundews and are really beautiful plants to grow, and very, very few people actually own them. Some of these guys include Drosera petulares, Drosera falconeri, Drosera lunata, and Drosera ordensis. <laughs> guys, I just realized something. We have Drosera lunata busy sprouting outside, and I Honestly, was I'm not sure, I'm not sure, wasn't sure, I'm still not sure if there are two different Drosra Linatas because I thought it was a tuberous Drosra. Okay guys, my bad, I just pronounced the word wrong. It's not Lunata, it's Lanata. So obviously, very similar words, both from Australia and obviously one is tuberous, which is the one that I have outside and the other one is obviously a woolly sun juice. So, that was my mistake. As I've said, these guys are super interesting. They have their hairs, which deflects sunlight and keeps the plant cool. 
and they're really amazing plants to grow. If you want to own them and look after them, you have to give them really, really warm temperatures as this is what they naturally experience in the wild. Damn guys, it's so hot right now, I don't know why. Next up, we have Pygmy Drosera. These guys are also native to Australia. They are very, very beautiful plants and the reason why they are called Pygmy Drosera is because they are super, super tiny plants which you can oftentimes only really see underneath a magnifying glass. Some of these plants include Drosera rosiana, Drosera scorpiodes, and Drosera pulchella. They are obviously very well known in the carnivorous plant community as pygmy Drosera, which are very easy to actually look after and grow. The super interesting thing about these guys is that when it does come to autumn time or springtime, depending on the actual plant itself, because sometimes they like to change the minds, they make little gemma. And what these gemma do in the middle of the plant is that they're actually exact clones of the mother plant but they are small and compact. And what happens is that when a raindrop hits them, they spring off the plant and they fly literally everywhere. And then they obviously grow a brand new plant from that little gamma. It is very, very interesting and a very unique trait amongst Drosera. And it's obviously something that Pygmy Drosera kind of became very famous for, besides them being obviously very, very small and very, very beautiful. Next up, we will look at the tuberous drosera. And now these guys are split into three different categories. This damn bird, guys, I'm telling you. That, that's the neighbor's bird, but he's squawking in the background. So that's what that noise is. And it literally doesn't stop. It is so annoying. There are erect tuberous drosera, such as drosera petulares, drosera menzisii, and drosera andersoniana. Now we actually own all three of these guys outside in our garden and they are erect growers. They are very, very beautiful and very, very strong. They obviously grow right up the center of the ground and they stay upright very, very strong. The other tuberous drosera that we will speak about also grow out the middle and obviously grow upwards, but they're much more floppy. And the reason for that is because they are actually climbing tuberous drosera. Now the whole point of what these guys try to do is that they try to make as much leaf and you know, create as much mass as possible so they can fall on branches and climb up trees and bushes and stuff so they can get high off the ground to catch all of the other insects that may be flying in the air. Next up, we have the fan-leaved tuberous drosera. Now these guys obviously have tubers underground as well, but the difference is that they have, as I said, fanned leaves. Some of these guys include drosera stolonifera and drosera platypoda. And I own these guys too, surprisingly enough. I have them growing outside as well and they're very very beautiful plants to look after and I found them quite easy so far but that may just be because I live in Australia where they are native to. And finally for the tuberous drosera we have the rosetta drosera. These include drosera macrophylla, drosera zonaria and drosera whittakeri. And now I actually own a couple of these guys as well so it's very very interesting to see that I actually have four of the different classifications of tuberous drosera. These guys obviously grow much lower on the ground. They actually spread the leaves out on the ground instead of forming you know, upright traps, just like the other guys that we were speaking about. It's very, very interesting to see that although they are all tubers, they all make the tubers underground, that they all have adapted different ways to catch insects and grow. Now we have the South African Drosera. South Africa is a place that has many, many Drosera. That is obviously the country where I was born and raised and where I grew up and left to now live in Australia which is obviously another place which has a lot and a lot and a lot of different Drosera as well. Some of these South African winter growing Drosera includes Drosera cystiflora, Drosera parsiflora and Drosera trinervia. Some of these guys that we also own in our collection and are very, very beautiful plants. For example, Drosera trinervia is actually one of the quickest moving sundews in the world. And the reason for this is because they have trigger traps on the outside of the plant that if you touch or obviously if an insect touches it, the trap instantly springs forward and puts that insect from that outside trap right into the center of the plant so that it can get digested. Now, as I said, these guys are all winter growers, which means that they grow in winter. And when it's summertime, they oftentimes just go dormant or form little tubers underground, which is essentially where they store all the energy in their big, thick roots. And now the last sundew. This is also a South African species. It is the king sundew. Drosera regia, which is the biggest sundew in the world. It is obviously a very, very beautiful plant and can have leaves reaching up to 50 centimeters in length. As I said before, we have one of these guys also growing in our collection and I can't wait for it to get big enough so that we can see its traps 
curling around all the different insects that land on it. Oh, guys, okay, that, that was a lot of talking and that's quite a long video. I hope that I can, you know, shorten it down enough for you guys so that you don't get really bored. Although I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we release a video talking about carnivorous plants every single week. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode.